We've all been there, we've got a Spectrum, maybe off of eBay or out of the loft, and we go to press the load button and nothing happens. Not a click, nothing appears on the screen, but there is a solution, so up yours, ravages of time! First thing we have to do is remove the metal faceplate though, and this can be done in one of two ways depending on what you have. Now the majority of them are held down with sticky tape, double-sided sticky tape that we need to um, remove. Um, however, there are some which are done in a different way and are held on with metal tabs. So, a quick warning for you to check before you attempt anything that the following information applies to certain spectrums and you need to check before trying the method outlined in the main video. Right, with that out of the way, we'll actually move on to how to identify how your faceplate is held on. Here's one that I prepared earlier. So here's a faceplate that's been completely abused by someone not realizing that it was held on with metal tabs. Um, one of these tabs has actually come away in the process of being ripped off. Now it's a, a metal, soft metal tab, I think it's copper, I think, or brass, I'm not sure, whatever one goes green. And basically they pop through these slots that are present in all of the rubber key models. However, the faceplates aren't all bendable tabs. It's a shame that they're not because these are actually the easiest ones to get off but if you open up your spectrum and you see these in four locations through the slot it's happy days because you've got the easiest faceplate to take off if only the person who had this had realized and not tried to rip it off with a screwdriver after heating it up okay uh, they've actually tried to repair the damage with a CDR pen didn't work looks really really shoddy anywho that's that let's go back now and we can follow the method of removal for the majority of rubber key models okay so this one's got a, a couple of little dints but nothing major so we'd like to keep it as cosmetically perfect as possible now the first thing we need to do in order to change the membrane as i said is get this faceplate off it's really really important that it's removed so we need a mobile phone opening tool or a prize, I like to call them. They're made of a soft plastic so they don't scratch too much. We'll also need some source of heat and I wouldn't recommend anything hotter than a hairdryer. Because I love you, I'm going to switch this on and off at the socket and I'll also mute the sound so your ears don't bleed. Okay, so here we go. First thing to do is make sure that your spectrum is open and also check for those tabs as I pointed out earlier. So remove the five screws here, 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 here and here. I've done it already. Flip it over and lift the top off gently. Now I've already disconnected the membrane connectors here. In fact one of them disconnected itself by disintegrating about 10 years ago. What happens to these is they get hot and environment screws them up. Yes, they die. Modern membranes don't do that which is great, great news. Okay, so to get this off, the first thing we need to do is get our hairdryer, pop it on, and start to gently heat the edges of the faceplate. I recommend working on one edge at a time. Um, that way you don't have to apply too much heat to the front of the specky. Uh, it'd be pretty hard to damage it anyway, because um, this is an aluminium plate, but um, take it easy. Next thing to do is pick it up and start to flex the plastic itself to further break the adhesive bond. Uh, the reason that we do this is the plastic will retain its shape a lot easier than the faceplate which is very thin aluminium so by flexing this we break the bond without bending the faceplate. Okay you can see it moving a bit there. It's all good stuff. Right so when you see a lot of movement um, and you can see it moving it will still be stuck down um, then's the time to go and grab your sliding tool and very, very gently pop it under the edge. You can see this is starting to come away already. And kind of cut through the tape. Now, take this really, really slowly. It's not difficult. You'll find it's really a, a matter of taking it as slowly as possible until it comes off. Don't apply any force. Okay, so I'm going to get the hairdryer again. Hit mute. And heat along the front bottom edge. Some of these you'll find, ow, 
fall off and some of these you'll find um, are really really stuck on so um, y you just need to sort of uh, approach it from the point of view of um, you're going to take your time okay so I'm going under the edge here again just putting a little bit of leverage on there just trying not to bend the faceplate going all the way along the edge here we go I can feel the tape kind of getting sliced through particularly in the middle there okay and that's the front part now okay bit more heat hit mute just do that bit there and go along the side yeah nice and hot give it a bit more of a flex actually before it oh okay um, and that's how to easily take one off um, that was a bit easier than I expected but the principles the same for the top edge and the other side so let's have a quick look underneath and put that to one side very gently somewhere it's not going to get squashed so if you've got a messy desk like me put it on something high <laughs> okay underneath we've got the rubber keyboard um, uh, keys themselves there's a bit of dirty tape there I'll scrape that off before I remount this okay and look at that 30 years of dirty filth luckily 30 years ago there was no porn on computers so this is pretty much just dust and sandwich remnants and the other side of the faceplate we can see lots of tape which I tend to leave on if I'm honest because I find that you can damage the faceplate more by removing it happy if anybody has got any other tips there but um, yes removing the tape is optional I leave it on the aluminium bit but I'll take it off the plastic body um, these bits here sometimes get splayed out when you're lifting it off so um, use the tape to stick it down rather than bending it again okay right give it a clean while it's off as well um, because when the keys are through the faceplate it makes it more difficult right tape along the sides let's take this off and have a look at the membrane so whip off the spectrum's rubber key mat underneath you'll find the membrane take that off replace it with your new one which will have hopefully two tails which plug into the spectrum main board whilst you've got the key mat off give it a wash um, double sided tape job done right whilst you've got the template off give it a wipe without the keys poking through it'll be a lot easier to do it the way I like to do it is put a bit of kitchen towel over the top and then saturate it with a cleaning solution this is just antibacterial for no reason other than it was to hand Then very very gently remove that and just give it a little wipe over the top if you're really really worried about deforming the template then a good tip is to take your spectrum top shell here we go and pop this on top and then the sides actually hold that again though don't push too hard just go over the top and give it a good old wipe down I'm not going to bore you with putting this all back together because it's just the same in reverse with a bit of double sided tape. So this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff signing out and reminding you to subscribe to get your fix. See you all in the next exciting episode. Bye!